Hello and welcome to my channel. This is season two, episode 11. First thing as always, thank you to those of you that have subscribed to my channel. If you are new, names will go up over here. And thank you to those of you that have been following and supporting me on the forum. Recognition goes up over here. Now, before I get into this video, I want to just say, yes. Yeah, I'm Gamble. You got a package for me? Do I need to sign for it? Hold on a second. Nice! Let's check out this care package. So what's gonna happen in this video is I'm gonna be talking about this particular model. So, lock and load. <laughs> I want to thank Honey Badger. Really appreciate the fact that you let me borrow this riff for this video today. So fingers crossed, hopefully I will do a good review. Hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully everyone else will. Now I've said this before, I'm not a history expert. I'm going to be throwing some pictures in, some videos in, some fun facts, my own opinions and experiences. And if there's anything that I get wrong or forget, feel free to put your answer in the comments down below. Appreciate it. So let's get into this. Now this riff here is a SEMA model and it goes under SEMA 040. This has been upgraded from what I've been told. It has a MOSFET in it. It has a stainless steel barrel. So what's interesting about this, as you can see from this side as well as this side, Honey Badger did his own custom paint job. And you may think, well, that's a bit odd. I've never seen that pattern before. Well, sometimes you don't need to have what most other people have. Sometimes doing something like this is nice because again, you're being unique, different. And I have used this, so this is from my own experience. I've used this a few times at Red Alert with this pattern. And it's quite effective actually. Any camo pattern can really be effective depending on the scenario. So if you go into a woodland site with a pink riff, yeah, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. But no, this actually does a great job for what it is. And here is one of the mags as well, that you can see he customized as well. There's no batteries in these riffs and there's no BBs. So this is a high cap, as you can see, on both sides. And he did a really great job on it. So, like I said, I have used this. I've caught a lot of people off guard just by, well, being stealthy and approaching the enemy. So what's interesting about this model, the SEMA model, and you'll hear this a lot on YouTube, is that they are a good budget gun for beginners, and I'm gonna say this right now, I agree. So what I'm gonna do is cover a few things now. So I used this pack, uh, sorry, battery here. This is an 8.4. What you do is you put the battery, take the dust cover off, and the good thing about these particular batteries is uh, there is a hole here, don't know if you can see it, leading into the gas tube. And actually, you can slot the battery in and attach it to this. Also, I've got an 11 volt battery here. So this particular upgrade can take up to an 11 volt battery. Um, Honey Badger did recommend to use a nine point volt battery to make this work. And I used the 8.4 and you'll see it in a video later on. And I had a blast shooting. So I'm going to put this back on, again, line it up, there we go. So, if you upgrade, like I've said before, you're going to need a higher battery capacity. If you want to leave it as it is, pretty much as it comes, standard, you can use a 7.4 ready to go. And this thing will shoot straight, or it should shoot straight out of the box. And this thing does the job, you'll see again later on. Now, what I want to cover is a few things. So this, if you're looking for the real designation of this, and this is where, sorry, where I might go wrong, this is a AK-74M based platform. So pretty much, as soon as the Soviet era fell and turned into modern Russia, 
These were pretty much the new standard AKs that were being manufactured and sent to their troops. So they were moving away from these particular old AK-74 designs, the wood. As you can see, they've both got the same uh, side folding stock. And this is pretty much what started the modern era for the Russians. Polymer hand grip, as you can see. They had two options. They had this one here, the skeleton side folding stock, or you could get like this, a polymer side folding stock. So this has a strange designation, so if I get this wrong, I think it is an AKS-74M. If I am wrong, please let me know, because I am curious. So I'm going to take this mag out. Now, what you'll find is, like I said, this is my AKS-74U. Okay, this was literally before the AK-74M came out. What you'll see here, particularly on the sling, if you look here, you can see it's metal. This one is a Russian sling, or Soviet sling, depending on which area you're going for, but nevertheless, they're all Russian. This sling, if you look carefully, here, the leather straps, this is a Chinese sling. So if you're looking at going for a full AK or mixing it up like here, I'll show you on the other side. So that's Chinese sling, AK sling. So there you go, a little fun fact there. So I'm gonna move this out of the way, put it down to the side. Hopefully it won't fall. So I've mentioned batteries, the high cap camo, Yes, it does take mid caps, and what you'll find is with certain mags, put this, in. this one, nice and firm, this will wobble, the high cap, see there's a little wobble. Now, if you're concerned as a beginner, don't worry, okay, for those of us that have been playing for quite some time, yes, sometimes mags eventually will wobble a bit. Now, Honey Badger has had this for three years and it's still going strong. So don't worry, you've got a little wobble. If you look at the butt stock as well, so the button's quite firm. You can see here, if I, there is a little wobble, even when unfolded, there is a little wobble. The hand grip, little movement. But remember, this is airsoft at the end of the day, okay? And this is a good budget gun, okay? You can find a lot of parts for this, you can upgrade it. And sometimes you don't need the latest and greatest in airsoft, but if you want an AK, I highly recommend going with SEMA, okay? Great choice for a budget gun for beginners. And what I want to show you quickly is I have this here. This is my rubber bayonet. If you are curious about rubber bayonets, I did buy this off eBay. I don't know if they're still on eBay, but I'm sure you can find them around online. So I'm going to take the Velcro off, like so. Now, slide it on. You can see here, over the barrel, the flash hider if you want to be more specific. Now, this is actually a nice solid fit compared to my AKM and my AKMS. Um, I know for a fact this seems very solid, it's not going anywhere, but I still highly recommend a piece of Velcro, easy enough, again this is airsoft, so if you want to be really picky saying you can't do that, well, airsoft is airsoft. So just for that extra security, again I can tighten it even more, but uh, there we go, so it does nothing really that bad, hopefully you can see that. Again, side folding stop. If you want that extra reach to get someone, there you go. Now, like I said at the beginning, if I didn't already, if you want to put sights on, particularly on these models, okay, you can change out the hand guards for tactical ones, the dust cover for a tactical one, but if you notice with these particular models, they already have a side stock attachment ready to go. So, like so. Hopefully get that on. There we go. Slide this across. That's not going anywhere. And you've got more of a tactical AK. 
from this one just to go with it. So hopefully you can see that. A proper tactical AK. There you go. And again, nice bit of protection for the sight. So I'm going to take the mag out. I'm going to take the AK bayonet off. I want to show you this quickly. Now, if you are thinking about getting particularly a side stock version for an AK, you have to consider this. Okay, very important. Well, I say it's very important against preference. I'll put this all over here. Now, as you can see, I've left the sight on for a reason. Now, if I fold it like so, oh, look at that. You can't close these things properly. So just bear that in mind if you decide to put on one of these particular side stock sight options, okay? So you have to keep it full. Um, like I said before, you can swap them out if you want to still be able to use that. Again, it's preference at the end of the day, so I'm going to take this off now. So you have your standard options with the AK. You've got safety here, so went fire. Flick down one, you've got full auto. Flick down, you've got semi, okay. So obviously watch your trigger discipline. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be playing soon. But no. This is a great model. Um, the fact that Honey Badger let me borrow this, again, really appreciate it. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to show you this quickly. It is a picture you should see in front of you. Now, originally this came in polymer black before he did his camo job. So it's your choice if you want to go with wood or tactical polymer. At the end of the day, AKs are an AK. Um, there's so much variety out there in the airsoft world um, from SEMA to other models like what I've got, the D-Boy, E&L, G&G, etc, etc, LCT, um, some of the best brands. But no, I highly recommend SEMA. So what I want to do now is show you a video of me testing this out. So as you can see today, I'm fully loaded out in my KLMK. I've got the hood up, I've got the target in the background. It is a perfect day, it's been a nice warm day. I do apologise if you hear cars in the background, I can't control that. So I'm going to shoot at this target with 0.2s and last time I shot at the box I was using Honey Badger's HK33. I have marked it out with blue pen. So let's see what we get with the SEMA AK today. So, as you can see from that quick video, that this is reliable, accurate. Yes, it's been internally upgraded, so I know for a fact this can shoot further than 30 meters. Sadly, however, I don't have a big enough sight to test it on. One interesting fact is I shot this on the same week that I shot the HK33, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. And if you are curious about me wearing the mask, I wasn't wearing anything else with it, lower face protection or any other type of hats. I've still got to test it out, but I did come across a few things. So you can wear it underneath your eye protection, Again, it does push it further up towards your face. So you've got to consider the eye slots, okay? And the other thing is it may have a tendency to move up, down, or to the side, which can be a little bit irritating. So again, rubbing up against the face. So you might have to readjust it constantly. Friendly tip there, but again, preference. So what do I think of the SEMA 040? Honestly, it's got a good feel to it. Full metal, polymer, depending on what model you want to go with. So I need to go over the pros and cons. So let's get the cons out of the way. I'm gonna put it up here, three things. So the first thing is, okay, before I do actually, Honey Badger has had this for three years, so naturally it's been worn and torn through fields. So the first thing is the polymer front grip here. It's a little loose, but again, nothing too serious. Again, nitpicking, 
The second thing is the buttstock, again a little loose, lip picking. And the third and final one is the magazine. Now this is a high cap, okay? The mid cap fits in here and doesn't move at all, very little wobble, so it will depend on what type of mags you get. Again, little nitpick there, depending on what you want to go with. So those three things there are essentially just the cons, me nitpicking. So let's put up the pros. So like I said before, it's reliable, it's accurate, it should be straight out of the box. Again, internally upgradable easily enough. External parts, you can mix and match, do whatever you want, okay? There's so many options and varieties out there from the brand, okay? So, honestly, I think my final conclusion would be this. If I had to start an Airsoft again, and being an AK fan, and I had to choose something, again, depending on my budget, I would 100% go with a SEMA AK model. Now, bear in mind, there's a lot out there. So this particular one, I would consider, yes. There are a lot more others to consider. Um, I would honestly say, stay away from the plastic looking ones, um, particularly by SEMA. Go with full metal, polymer, wood. Again, it's your preference at the end of the day, but I can highly recommend this particular one. And yeah, if I had the chance to do it again, I would. In fact, given that choice, one day, maybe, fingers crossed, I might actually get a SEMA AK and compare it with the rest of my models in my collection. So yeah, that's it really. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. So time to finish. Like, comment, share and subscribe. Don't forget to click the little bell icon so you know when the next video is. I enjoyed making this video. I look forward to making the next video. The most important thing you can do is stay safe. So this is a little bit of bonus material, behind the scenes, deleted scenes, whatever you want to call it, okay? The reason why my video was shorter this week compared to the last one I did, one simple thing, one stupid thing, is during the week I was going through my riffs with my pen knife and I wasn't concentrating and I cut my hand. Nothing too serious. Lesson learned though, okay? Make sure you keep your eye on the ball or eye on the riff in this case because you never know when your pen knife might decide to attack you. So the most important message is don't mess with pen knives, okay? Because they do hurt. And I wanted to finish off by just doing this, racking the bowl, satisfying, especially with an AK. And that was it really. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this, had a laugh, and most importantly, fingers crossed we'll be playing soon. Take care.